Hey everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. Currently doing some videos on the plums. So I received, it ended up being 60 or 70 kilos of plums from our food hamper, which is a, a food pantry, food bank style situation. You pay a set fee a month, you get a hamper. Some months they have excess of fresh produce. This month they had plums and apples. And then you get a couple of items like a, a couple of bags of each sort of thing. I did send a message and say, if you've got any surplus after everyone's collected what they need, could you give me a bell and I'll grab some extras. So I ended up with a lot of plums. So I have been slowly working through them and making sure that we use them in a way that they're not going to get wasted. We have finally gone through the last of them today. Like this video is from last week sometime, but uh, the last of the plums got through today, uh, made a great big plum crumble for everyone and the whatever was left that had started going yuck has been given to the animals today, which they really appreciate. They really like the plums. So finally got through them all. Now, yesterday's video or the day before, whenever it was, I showed barbecue plum sauce, which we made a batch of and I made a quite a large batch and then I also made another triple batch later on and it's in the next day or two's videos part of that but one of the other things I really wanted to make with the plums was Worcestershire sauce so Sally Wise has a recipe for Worcestershire sauce on her website that uses plums so that is the one that I decided to do uh, there's lots of variations on the internet though on how to do your own Worcestershire sauce and I think the biggest benefit to it is that it's gluten free if you do it yourself uh, so for anyone who has issues with gluten, buying gluten-free Worcestershire sauce, then making your own will be good for that. So come along and see me make it. This is the first time I've made it myself. Uh, and so I'll let you know how it went for me. Uh, and I haven't actually tried it yet. So sometime in the next few videos, I will make something where I will use it and uh, bring you along for when I try it. So let's see how the whole process went. All right, so Sally Wise is Australian and she has uh, a website with a whole bunch of preserving recipes. She does a lot of Fowler's Vicola style uh, canning. Now, Fowler's Vicola is a specific style of canning, uh, jarring. In Australia, I suppose it's referenced as jarring or bottling. Uh, it's not called canning here, but obviously my audience is wide and I watch a lot of American YouTube as well. Uh, but it's done with water that is kept at a steady temperature uh, rather than uh, boiling. It's kept under the boil. I think it's 90 degrees, 95 degrees, something like that. I haven't actually used the method because it's just a little too fiddly for me and I don't have the ability to use an electric unit. So I don't foul as anything. I don't use that method for my bottling. I use uh, steam canning, uh, water bath canning, pressure canning, that sort of thing. But she does a lot to do with Fowlers uh, and she's in a couple of the Australian preserving groups uh, and she has a couple of books which I own a, quite a few of and she has a website so uh, I've used a lot of her recipes to to work with over time and she has a Worcestershire sauce on her website that uses plums she also has one that uses lemon I think but plums is what appealed to me because I had the plums. Now, I had intended to make this with the jarred plums from last year that I still have on my shelf. But then I got all these fresh plums, so may as well use the fresh ones. Now, the recipe states that she like she uses plums but can use other stone fruits and things like that. I think the plums give it a really nice colour. But I think that anything of a similar sort of a flavour profile would work as well. Again, I had, fl I had plums, so that's what I was using. I did see a lot of recipes when I was Googling and different variations of making Worcestershire sauce. A lot of them didn't have any fruit in them at all. But I like the idea of the, the depth of flavour that a fruit can give but I also like the color and things like that so this was the recipe I decided to go with the recipe calls for 1.5 to 3 kilos of plums I would think that the more fruit you use the more liquid you end up with but at the same time you're going to pull most of the solids out so it sort of depends on the fruit you're using as well uh, so maybe not but I had plenty of plums so I went with the full 3 kilos it does mean that there's more potential for sediment in the jar as well like because the more solids you're using the more it's going to break down the more chance you've got sediment unless you really finally you know strain it but it doesn't really worry me it's not like i'm going to be drinking it it's going to be going into things so that's fine i started by getting all the ingredients in the pan 
the sauce uses a range of very strongly flavored ingredients, which I suppose makes sense because it's a it's a very umami flavor. It's very strong. It's very deep. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of gradients of flavor. Worcestershire sauce, which is why I really like using it. I like using it in my bolognese. I like using it in my barbecue sauces. I like using it in my marinades. I really like that depth that it gives everything. Uh, it has 125 grams of garlic, 120 grams of ginger. I used my frozen stuff for this because it didn't matter that it had the skin on because we're going to be straining it. 60 grams of cloves and 30 grams of allspice. The recipe calls for whole allspice berries. I didn't have whole allspice berries. I only have ground allspice. I did a bit of Googling because you use the whole berries. It says that you can use the same amount of ground. So I just used 30 grams of ground allspice. It didn't seem, it seemed to work fine, but that was what I did. Uh, and it used uh, a teaspoon of cayenne and 125 grams of salt. Now, it also has four cups of treacle and 500 grams of brown sugar. Or in my case, I used raw sugar and then some molasses. You then have to add five liters of malt vinegar. Now, <laughs> this is when I had issues with my pot size. I hadn't really thought about it prior that it was going to have all these solids in it. And then I was going to have to add five liters of liquid as well. And as I discussed in the previous video, this pot's only 14 liters. So I definitely need to upgrade my pots. I'm, I'm looking. Uh, so once I started putting the the uh, malt vinegar in, I realized this is never going to fit in this pot. So I moved it to my Buffalo. Now my Buffalo is one of my pressure canners, but it's stainless steel. It's a 30 liter pot, so it's overkill. But my Presto is only... 21 liters I think but the problem with the Presto is that it's aluminium and this is a high acid product so I won't cook something that's high acid in aluminium because it can cause pitting and stuff of the aluminium so I put it in the buffalo because it's stainless steel it was bigger uh, now the cost of malt vinegar was a little bit of a like it's five liters of malt vinegar in it which seems a lot of a store-bought item it's a bit like when I did the baked beans and there was that toss up about the fact that it has so much um, tomato juice in it. Tomato juice isn't something I normally buy. I do buy malt vinegar every now and again for like pickling onions and stuff, but I don't use it very much. So it was a lot of malt vinegar that was bought purposefully for this recipe, uh, which, you know, but it makes a fair bit too. So we'll see. I'll, I'll break it down at the end and see how much it ended up costing me. So after you get everything into the pot, you bring it up to a boil and then you turn it down to simmer for three hours. Now, it smells like strong. You're cooking off vinegar. You've got all that garlic and ginger in there. Uh, it is really, really potent. I would not do this in an indoor kitchen. Uh, I'm really lucky. My kitchen is out on the patio. <laughs> so, uh, but even then, uh, people would walk into the kitchen, get a, a nose full of fumes and go, oh, wow. So, yeah, it, it kind of burns. It's very strong uh, and it permeates everything. And you're going to simmer it for three hours. So be aware of that if you're going to make it, because that's a really long time to be simmering something with that strong a smell. Uh, and it's going to... Like if you did it inside, it's going to go through the whole house. And I bet you it would smell like that for quite a while because it is, it's vinegar fumes being cooked off. So just be aware of that. Once you've simmered it for your three hours, then you need to strain it. Now I used a metal colander, very fine metal colander to strain it because I'm not overly concerned about the particles in the sediment. I didn't push the fruit against the walls of the colander when I was doing it. I just moved the uh, the pulp around to get to make sure it got the juice out of there. Now, I think perhaps that because of looking at the amount of ingredients purchased to make this and the end results, that perhaps straining it in something like a jelly bag and letting it hang so a bit like what I use for my cheese, I'll put a photo here, a bit like what I use for straining my cheese might be a good idea. You're going to get every last drop out of it that way. Uh, and I don't imagine any insects or anything are going to want to land on it either because of that whole smell thing that we discussed. So I think hanging it would probably be a good idea to get every last bit out of it, especially when you're spending that much on the ingredients to go in it. Uh, but I don't know because, yeah, so I moved it around the 
the colander without pushing it against the side so that we got as minimal sediment as possible, put the scraps in a bowl and just kept on going. I did pour off any liquid that rose to the top of the bowl of scraps. So if you've ever made anything like this, you know that sort of liquid sort of rises to the top and poured that off into what I already had as well, just to make sure I was getting as much as possible. But it did create a fair bit of its own liquid. So I do think that there is the potential that I lost maybe the rest of a jar by not hanging it and letting it drip for a while. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to make it again and see. But the whole point is too that you never really know how much you're going to get because it depends on the fruit that you use, the quantity of fruit that you use uh, and what the evaporation's like. So on that day, if you've got it turned up slightly higher or slightly lower, it's going to affect the amount of evaporation and how much liquid you lose when you're simmering it for three hours. So I don't know. I don't know what the standard is to get out of this, but we'll see. Anyway, it was, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so I cleaned some Posada bottles really well and used those for the product. Now, you don't have to can these. You don't have to process these because it's such a high acid product. But uh, we'll see how I go. I discussed it yesterday or the day before, whenever the last video was as well, about getting things sterile in my kitchen is really hard uh, because we don't have hot water to the sink. We boil kettles or use a bucket from the hot water system in the shower uh, just because we tried putting the hot water to the sinks and everything else, but you end up using too much because you turn the taps on. Anyway, different, totally squirrel, different story. Uh, but so we use buckets from the shower and that hot water system only gets to 50 degrees or we use boiling kettles in the sinks and things like that. Anyway, it's hard to get things sterile. Uh, so things are every, they're washed with warm, hot, soapy water, but sterile is a little hard in my environment. So I would normally process things even if they don't need to be processed. But this is Worcestershire sauce. It's not, you know, like this, it, it is like 90% vinegar. <laughs> so I decided to, we'll see, and I'll check. So what I did is you have your warm, clean, sterile jars, you pour your liquid in and then you cap it while it's hot and it's supposed to last on your shelf. So I warm washed my bottles, I filled them up, I put the lids on while everything was hot, the bottles were hot, the water juice sauce was hot, everything else, and it will create a bit of a seal because of that, like open kettle canning. Uh, I don't open kettle can anything though, just as a side note, it just, but this doesn't actually need to be canned. So uh, anyway, I got four and about three quarters bottles full. The bottles are around about 700 mils, so say what, 3.3 .3 litres out of it? That was with three kilos of plums and five liters of malt vinegar. So I filled all the jars, put the lids on them, and then once they were cool, I labeled them, put them on the shelf, and I'll keep you updated as to how they last on that shelf and whether they, I see any issues with growth anywhere. Uh, and we'll do a taste test soon on those as well. So I did some calculations on what it cost me to make too, uh, and then versus what it would cost to buy. So if I have a choice, I buy Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. It's just a, it's a particular brand that's quite nice. Uh, but I buy whatever's on special, realistically. But I thought I'd compare it to the price of that as a as a you know something to look at as to whether it's worth the effort. Now, I'm not calculating in my time or the gas or anything else in this, but I don't do that for anything else I can either because there's a choice in canning it. But for the product, the the point here is more the product that you buy in. A bit like the tomato juice for the baked beans that I'm going to try doing watered down passata instead because. Buying something in to make something else sometimes feels wrong. So uh, we will see. Anyway, so the malt vinegar cost me about $9.75 for the five liters. The tree cool was $5.45 for a jar. Uh, and we it was basically a whole jar was used. Now, I do know that you can make your own tree cool. I don't know it ends up not being treacle as such but a faux form of it. And I don't know if that's an issue or not. But I might have a look at that out of curiosity. Uh, everything else was minimal cost. There was the spices, some ginger, some garlic, some salt and things like that. Say, say an extra $3 worth of bits and pieces of extra things. But I, they're all things that I already have anyway. They're nothing, there was nothing that I had to purposely purchase to make the Worcestershire sauce. The things I purchased purposely to make it were the malt vinegar and the treacle. So say we did $3 worth of extras. That it works out to about 55 cents per 100 grams at 3.3 .3 liters. So I said, oh, okay, that doesn't seem too bad. So I went on to the Coles website. Coles is a grocery store here that we regularly go to. Uh, they have Lee and Perrin's 
uh, on sale at the moment. It's only a small 290 ml jar. It's a dollar off. So it's normally $5 for a 290 ml jar. It's $4 at the moment. So on sale, it's currently running at $1.38 per 100 grams or 100 mils, whichever way you want to look at it. So the homemade stuff is almost a third of, a pro of the price. That's a pretty significant saving. Like even with the cost of buying the malt vinegar and buying the treacle and even my own time, which I didn't spend, like when I'm canning something, it's not generally the, I'm not doing just one thing. And I wasn't this day either. I was making plum jam or something, I think as well, which will be on another video because it all ended up trying to get it all together was too hard. Uh, so it would have ended up like a 40, 50 minute video to try and pull the steam juicing, the plums and the jams and anything. So I've split them up. Uh, but I, I don't really count my time. My time is my choice to have something homemade. That's fine. The jars were reused. I reused lids on the jars as well because I wasn't actually processing them. So I just used the lids from the jars prior that had been used like the, the actual muddy lids for the jars because they're muddy jars. Um, and so the actual only like significant outlay was that malt vinegar and the treacle uh, and then the few extra bits and pieces. So 55 cents per hundred for the homemade versus $1.38 on sale per hundred for the Lee and Perrins. So there are cheaper brands, I'm sure. I just grabbed that as a, you know, Lee and Perrins is well known as a brand of Worcestershire sauce. So I thought that's a good one to compare it to. Uh, so it worked. I'm, I'm not unhappy with that. Uh, I think I would make it again if I like it. As I said, I haven't tried it yet. I just have forgotten. So I need to try it and I will um, let you know. I need to make maybe a Diane sauce or something would be nice to make with, but we don't have any steak or anything. I'll see how I go. I'll make something where the Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce is like a, a flavor of it, not just uh, an addendum to the to the product. Uh, it's not very nice straight, but it's nice in a gravy, like a Diane sauce, things like that. So I will give that a go. And I will let you know what I think of the flavor. I still have some store-bought stuff too. So maybe I can make two different things. One with the Lee and Perrins and one with the homemade one. And make a comparison and be cu out of curiosity. It's more just curiosity than anything else. I was surprised that there was no anchovies or anything in the homemade one. But they're normally fermented and stuff. So I'd imagine that that would add a whole different level of required preparation for the homemade stuff but when I did a quick google I didn't see anything with anchovies in it either so I'm not real sure but uh if you've ever made Worcestershire sauce and you have a favorite recipe please share it with me because I'm willing to try more than one though I do have 3.3 liters it's gonna take me a little while to get through <laughs> but thank you for joining me uh on the video today and I will see you on the next one uh I still have as I said I've got the plum jelly and plum apple cordial and something else to share as well in all my footage. I just haven't got it into a form that I can share yet. I'm getting there though. So thank you for joining me again and I will see you next time. Bye guys.